Hello, welcome back to another fantastic edition of Be Well Together. We are going to inspire you today. We are going to put a spring in your step today because we have the incomparable Alonzo King, ah, <laughs> world-renowned choreographer and also the son of civil rights activist Slater King and Valencia King Nelson. Like this is such a big deal. This is a really big deal. Um, <laughs> For those of you who are not familiar with Alonzo's work, he completed his formal training in New York City, where he also performed with the Dance Theater of Harlem, amongst other dance companies. And he founded uh, Lines Ballet almost 40 years ago, which is incredible because he clearly founded this at like two years old. <laughs> he also is recipient of numerous awards including uh, the National Endowment for the Arts, Choreographic Fellowship, and the Kennedy Center uh, Master of Choreography. His choreography is basically in the repertoire of more notable dance companies than we could possibly have time to list. And so today, he is going to share with us how to remain peaceful in the midst of activity and the importance of being really, really centered when you're being bombarded with responsibilities that are just coming at you with hyper at hyper speeds which is like our whole existence right now <laughs> so uh this is going to be a really great conversation um also really thrilled that lola banjo is making uh, a return visit with us lola of course is uh, our global events chair for bold force and she's going to be helping us out with the question and answer at the end so to get us to get really feeling the Alonzo spirit, uh, we're going to start with a video so we can really take this all in and, uh, and then he's going to speak to us. Go, go, go. I Wow, so beautiful. Thank you so much for being with us this morning, Alonzo. Thank you, Jody, and thank you for your beautiful and fun introduction. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, tell us about you. Tell us about what you're thinking about these days. Tell us about you know, how you're kind of approaching all of the this, this chaos in your life. I think the, the instant stop of everything that created just this wide open vacuum is shocking, devastating, but also fertile with opportunity. Because we have the ability right now with undistracted focus to look internally at ourselves and visualize what is and what isn't working. We have this pause where we can stop the willy-nilly going along with the flow to say, wait a minute, this is a pivotal moment and I want some self-examination so I can decide how do I want to live this life what do I want to bring to it? How do I see the, how do I visualize the ending in terms of expansion or growth? And what are my gifts to the world? 
before I depart. So it brings up the serious primordial questions that have um, stymied human beings since the beginning of time. Who am I? Why am I here? Because you have the presence of anything could happen. And that brings a vibrancy and, a, and also a pause to life. And that opportunity, Jody, to say, I'm going to examine myself is one of the richest places for expansion. It's introspection, just like so many people are introspecting right now. Am I a racist? Do I have a trace of that in me? Let me get educated in certain ways. Let me read this and read that. And so in that same manner of introspection, it should continue with everyone all over the world. Am I selfish? Am I greedy? Is there the things that I dislike in other human beings? Is there a trace of that inside of me? Let me introspect and remove it so that I can contribute something positive to this world. It's interesting that we think that our thoughts are these kind of little individual things that are separate from other people, but thoughts are universally connected and we plug into them, whether they be negative or positive. And so if our thoughts are negative, we're adding to the bonfire. We're adding to the malaise. And so this period to actually examine your thoughts, thoughts that when you're super busy, you wouldn't have the opportunity to examine them because you're in the rush. You're taking care of your kids. You're, you have deadlines. You have projects. And so you're in the constant whir. And when you have the time to say, no, let me really introspect and see what I ignored that may be subconscious. And so with quiet time and with really um, quiet interiorization, you're able to see enemies and friends. And you want to build up the internal friends and diminish the enemies. And I say that because <clears throat> we're really at war inside of ourselves and that war is reflected outside of ourselves and so the internal war has to be has to be abated it has to be neutralized it has to be healed it has to be stopped and that means any contradictions any things that that as I was saying earlier, any things that you look, I, I, I always love to think of it as, as a painting in the process. What is, what is unnecessary here? What is blocking the light? How can I make this clearer? And so as we're working on the masterpieces of our own lives, because that is the greatest art, the art of living, there has to be extraction. Just like in all building and making, you know, that's what we humans do. We're makers and builders. And the best making and doing and building is art, is with art. And I like to think of art as knowledge. In its, in its lowest form <clears throat> or its baseline form, it's the knowledge of how things are done. In its highest form, it is the merging of the individual into the universal. And so that idea earlier about expansion that never, ever wants to stop. Okay, you, you just kind of blew my mind there for a minute. I'm like trying to process that idea of <clears throat> art being the individual's into the universal. Yes. Yes. And so when I'm thinking about where we're at right now and this this inner war. Yes. That we're that we're going through. You know, I'm curious about kind of the 
the journey maybe and the sustainability and the endurance maybe would be another way to look at it mm -hmm. because it's gotten so complex with one crisis upon another yes one internal war yes. after another right yes. and that that initial vacuum that you spoke of that left us all with that space and that time yes it it feels like all of that space has been filled with so much conflict that it's it's just exhausting mhm mm mhm mm and you know when i think of going to fight a battle and i think of my individual you know contributions to something more universal i i feel like i'm running out of steam mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I'm curious how you kind of think about that when you, you know, when you're creating this beautiful art and when there is, you know, a tremendous amount of physical endurance that is needed and there is a much deeper amount of emotional and mental investments yes. to be able, you know, to realize that potential. And so, I'm, I'm curious about like how this, you know, this, these waves are impacting you and how you think, how you coach and teach and mentor people to like be able to go the distance. And we don't know how long this is going to be going on. Or what new may come along after. Or what new or what, how it's <laughs> going to get even more complicated from where we sit today. Yeah. Well, the, the, the challenge is we have to change. That is clear. Yeah. We can't go back to normal, and we, it's particularly business as normal, with agri-farming, the way we treat animals, what we're doing to the planet, the way we treat human beings. That cannot return again. I think addressing what you just brought up, Jody, is that there is a place where you are exhausted and there is also another place where you can be refueled because mm -hmm. if you are a giver, you have to also go to the well to replenish yourself. And the most revivifying, ever new, constant wellspring of renewal is internal. Mm -hmm. And in, 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 in dance training, we, we talk about it of the center, the place where you're really centered, and it's a place that's close in the spine. And the idea is if you're in <clears throat> a merry, what do they call it? A Ferris, not a Ferris. A merry go round? A merry go round. Mm -hmm. I forget what the name is. Yeah, the merry go round. But if you're in the very center, you're solid, you're fixed. If you're on the periphery and it speeds up very fast, you're thrown off mm. completely. Mm -hmm. So it's that centering place. And so I think there's a problem with how we identify ourselves. That's a really big deal because what you identify with, you eventually become. And most of us, to be blatantly honest, <clears throat> have been fooled into thinking that we are humans with limitations and frailties. But in reality, we are immortals playing the role of mortals and we have to reclaim our identity. How do you think about your identity? I think of my identity as consciousness. Mm -hmm. Consciousness. Um, Yogananda talks about when someone is asleep, I mean, knocked out, unconscious, asleep, a drool hanging from their mouth, <laughs> that <clears throat> when they wake up, they're aware of whether they slept well or not. And so that means that that awareness is always there, 24-7. That witness is always present. And that is closer to what we are instead of the normal identities of race, sex, age, location, blah, 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 blah. Those peels have to be 
those layers have to be peeled off when we present the question to ourselves, who am I? But no, who am I really? Pass every one of those and it comes back to consciousness. We are a triumvirate of body, mind, and soul. We, the, the body <coughs> has to be kept healthy with foods that have electricity in them, with foods that are living. There are foods that um, are innervating to the body. There are foods that poison the body, that make you um, drop in energy. The mind also needs expansion. It needs to be exercised. It needs to plummet into a depth that's behind, that's larger than the ego mind. And the soul, the disease of the soul is when there's ignorance of anything <clears throat> except the senses. And that soul awareness is when there is a quietness and a stillness internally where you are not disturbed. It's like going to sleep but staying alert. So you're cutting off your sense telephones of sight, touch, smell, taste, um, and hearing. Those are cut off and you go into a quiet place where you're able to receive more information, where there is expansion, where you can make decisions quicker, where the clarity is apparent because you're not clumsily in the way. And that awareness is really closer to what we really are. And how much time would you say that, you know, in all of the things that you do and you manage, how much, like what percentage of your time would you say that you spend in that place of clarity? Is this like a meditation practice in the morning? Is this like a place that you, you know, try to just bring yourself back to all the time throughout the day? I think that that, you know, the rishis of ancient India, they discovered how we enter the body and how we, through those psychophysiological chakras, return back to bliss. Yoga means union. And there is, there, there is, let me put it even more plainly. Most human beings, well, not most, all of us, we are looking to escape pain and suffering and find some kind of joy mm. that never goes stale. Mm. And that edict right there makes us make all our choices. Mm -hmm. That either this is going to, this is going to, diminish or prevent suffering, and this is going to bring me joy. We mm. all have that in common. Mm. The, <clears throat> we realize, or those of us who have acquired things, realize that there is um, a, a, a concentration and a willpower to make things happen but once you have those things, once those things are in your hands, they're in your possession, they pale because so they don't satisfy. So Something sad. is always missing. And so to stop chasing the carrot in front of you, you say, wait a minute. There's something there. internal mm. that is much more satisfying because it's mm. closer to what we are. Matter cannot satisfy spirit and our soul nature, matter can't feed it. And so people who have doubt about the interior world or a world that is beyond the senses, they have to be Lewis and Clark about it. They have to go on the expedition. They have to determine, is this true or not? But not to passively just dismiss it. No, we all are on <clears throat> the heroic journey of self-discovery. And the great minds, the, 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 the mental giants and spiritual giants 
of millennia have said, you are souls. You have an ego nature <clears throat> and you have a soul nature. We're souls playing roles. And those roles have been interchanging for incarnations. And there is a time to go home. And home is internal. When people are in trouble, when there's tragedy, when there's storm, what do people, they want to get home. If home is to take care of the kids, it's home, it, that means what? Peace. Because mm -hmm. if my kids are in trouble, I have no peace. And so the real internal home is inside. When, you, when there is, um, let's say, something happens, there's a tragedy, you are looking to the person who is calm, who is making decisions, who's not wrapped up in emotion and is in you till they, they can't do anything, they're not helpful. It is the person who has stepped away for a moment so that their vision is expanded and they can do what is required to remedy the situation to the best of their ability. That's what we want to be in life. We want to be able to help. We want to be able to help our, our fellow beings. We want to be able to love our fellow beings. The, the compassion, when you are feeling compassion, you've dropped your self-identity and you are feeling for someone else. And right at that moment, you're expanded. You're mm. expansive. The moment mm. you see someone suffering and you identify, which is what happened with George Floyd, your expansion opens right away. And the other part of it is it's hurting you, so you want it to stop. <laughs> <laughs> and so this, this um, what we were saying earlier, this thing of identification, it has to come from, it has to travel from me to we to oneness. That's mm -hmm. the evolutional, that's the evolutional mm -hmm. chart. Mm -hmm. From me to we to oneness. Mm -hmm. You know, first it's all ego, me, me, what I want, what I want. <clears throat> and then with expansion, it's the family, it's others. And often the family can be us for and no more. And so that's still too tight. And then with more expansion, it is oneness where I identify with the mountain, the ocean, the animals, the spring, the, the air. It is oneness that no one is a stranger. It's impossibility for anyone to be an alien. That, that magnanimity, magnanimity of identification. And so to, some, to, to take it even deeper, Jody, I would say that our inner life is our real life. Mm. And from that place, we can be in the external as long as we're poised in the internal. We can go into all kinds of activity. <clears throat> but if we're thrown off the internal and there is no peace, then there's madness. Okay, I could listen to you for days on end. You are amazing. <laughs> you are such a joy. Thank you so much. Lola, I want to make sure that we get a chance to bring your voice into this conversation and, and any questions that you or our audience may have. Yeah, absolutely, Jody. I was just about to say, I could listen to you all day as well. I mean, you have such great wisdom and, and great insights. I learned a lot from what you were talking about, like how it's, you know, this is truly a time for self-reflection. And I, I particularly um, hung on what, what one thing that you said, you said, what you identify, what you become, you know, so right. that is that is so true. And I just want to say thank you on behalf of Bold Force, our Black ERG at Salesforce for being a part of this. And of course, having me have, be a part of this conversation with you. We honor you, we respect you, and just celebrate your legacy. You're amazing. You're a trailblazer. Um, I had a couple of questions, but I, I think we're only going to have time for one. Maybe I'll just wrap well, we up. Can, we need to get two. 
Go ahead, yeah. go for it. <laughs> no, so I wanted to, I mean, you mentioned a couple of this, uh, a couple of things already, actually. Like, you know, just stay, you mentioned staying calm in the face of crisis. I mean, we've all gone through tremendous crisis um, recently, especially, you know, with everything that happened with COVID and all the racial tension that's happened in this country. So I think we'd love to learn from you how you've stayed, managed to really stay calm. I think you've answered some of it, but, you know, for, for, for us that are listening, um, for everyone that's active in the conversation, like what kind of advice would you give us in terms of how to like navigate those conversations where emotions are flared and there is a lot of tension? Um, how do you navigate that and, and manage to stay calm? And the second question is, you know, coming from a civil rights family, how have you managed to infuse um, the lessons that you've learned into your work and also how you're approaching the current situation? I think that if we are in conversation with people and there is a lot of emotion, we have to listen. <laughs> we have to listen. The, we have, if we think of the national body, I mean, we should think of the world body, but if we think of the national body, it has, had, it has wounds that we've ignored huge, <clears throat> life-threatening wounds to everyone, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, of every ways that what was done <clears throat> to the Native American mm -hmm. and the enslaved African was enormous in terms of damage. Mm -hmm. And so to ignore it, <clears throat> to not go to the doctor, <laughs> to not say, hey, there's some bleeding here and this wound is so deep and, it's, and we've ignored it for so long, that is perilous. Mm -hmm. And so in our world family, <clears throat> we have to take time because we're so busy before. We have to take time to say, you know what? we're moving into a higher age and this antiquated <clears throat> harming evil, it cannot go with us. Right. It's not gonna work. We're actually really, the velocity is changing and we're moving into a higher age. It, it's inevitable that one day all physical problems will be healed. Mm -hmm. Science is going there, it's inevitable. The major ones will be psychological, <laughs> you know, that's the truth. And, and thinking of that progression, I go back to the first point that outer space is not the final frontier, it is inner space. Uh, amen. Amen. And so if I can get to the place where I see someone as my relative, that, that, that this person is my relative, regardless of how they look and regardless of how they behave. Mm. And so love is the answer. Not sentimental Hallmark card love, but the real, the love of, of millions of mothers. The love of billions of mothers, that kind. Mm. That's the only thing that can heal because laws don't work. I'm sorry, we have, we have laws galore and we will have more. And of course they can, you know, with litigation, we work with the laws, but it's hearts that have to change. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that is self-work, that is self-work. And so we go back again to do I have, a, what trace of poison do I have in myself? If I recognize it in someone else, and so the mirror of my mind, is there a trace of that in me? And if there is, I need to eradicate it. And that is helping the world. There's one less scoundrel. Huh. Amazing. Thank well, you. So and much. the power of, 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 of um, evicting the scoundrel within <laughs> is, right. is, quite, is quite profound. That's right. 
Oh, Alonzo, I thank, thank you. you for being here. I really, you're just a tremendous, a tremendous human being, and we are all better for this time with you. And I do hope you will join us again soon. This has been wonderful. Thank you for really having wonderful. me. And we're all tremendous, and that's what people have to realize. Yes, you know what? That's it, everyone. You are all tremendous. It's true. This is it. This is how we're all here together. This is and, what this journey is all about. And people who haven't realized that they are tremendous. They don't know themselves yet, but you, we are all tremendous. Uh, this is so great. Oh my God. Maybe I should just skip out of my next meetings and just hang out <laughs> with you. <laughs> all right. Listen, thank you so much for being with us, Alonzo. Thank you to our audience for taking time to hear this important conversation. I hope you are as moved and inspired as Lola and I are. Be happy, be healthy, and be well. Mm -hmm.